Do you want to learn how to create a sweat proof makeup? Then this video is definitely for you. Hello, you guys. We have a tutorial. Let's create this beautiful look and while we talk about how to create a sweat proof makeup. So I got this question from a subscriber here that say, please, ma, can I ask something? What can one do to really stop someone's makeup from spoiling, especially with someone that sweats so much? For instance, in a situation, a client is serving as a chief bride. You know their work that day is usually tedious where they run up and down assisting the bride. The lady in question sweats really hard. How can we prevent the makeup from spoiling? I have experienced this bad makeup from Chief Bright's maid several. Is it possible to apply only concealer, maybe leave foundation? Please, what the heck can I use? So today's video is a two-in-one video. We're going to be creating a tutorial, blaming this beautiful model of why I answered that question. When she sent that message, what I told her was that I was going to make a video dedicating that video to that question because there was no amount of anything i'm going to type that i think i can get the exact response i want to give to her because there is no option for voice notes on youtube so definitely i have to make a video for that so we're going to be glamming this beautiful model this was a shoot i did for a hair um hair vendor hair seller it's like a collaborative shoot where um the hair seller i think she has a sale or something but this look turned out really really nice so back to the question how to create a sweat proof makeup what can we do to make the makeup last long especially if your client is going to be running around all day first let me start with there is nothing that stops sweat there is nothing that pre prevents your client or any human being from sweating because sweating is natural so there's absolutely nothing you can do to stop sweat however there is something you can do to control it just as we can control oil there is something you can do to control sweat when makeup is not is not surgery, it's not Botox. If you want your makeup to be the way it is, under the rain, under the sun, in every situation, every weather, then go get a Botox. Because what I do here is makeup. What we all do as makeup artists is makeup and not Botox. So what we do in such situation is we opt for products that controls the sweat for a particular period of time. When you do makeup, there are rules to makeup. There are rules you have to follow when you have makeup on. You don't wear your makeup and go under the sun and expect your makeup to be intact. Be exactly how the makeup artist did before you left her studio. She is not a magician. Personally, I am not a magician. As a makeup artist, I am not a magician. So to control that sweat or control the oil for a particular period of time, you have to get your skin prep intact. I've always said this countless times. Long-lasting makeup does not start from a matte foundation. It does not start from a matte concealer. Long-lasting makeup starts from your skin prep. You have to get your skin prep intact. Your skin prep has to be intact to get or achieve a long-lasting makeup. I have this video on my channel, which I'm going to leave the link in the description below, and I'm going to leave the link at the end of this video my long lasting makeup wall tools you have to check out that video so what you do when you're working on a skin that someone that sweats so much or when you're trying to prevent sweat you have to start from your skin prep one is cleanse the face you have to clean the face and make sure the face is well clean and well intact next you go into with a moisturizer try as much as possible to work with a water-based moisturizer when i have a client that sweats so much or when I have a client that has oil skin, if I'm trying to control the oil, I'll go in with a water-based moisturizer. If I'm trying to control the sweat on the skin, I go in with a hydrating moisturizer. It just works perfectly well for me that way. And when you're done with the moisturizer, make sure your moisturizer absorbs properly into the skin before going into the next product. Every single step of makeup you do, the product has to absorb properly into the skin before you go into it with the next step the reason makeup application takes one hour or one hour 30 minutes or 45 minutes is not because the makeup artist is slow or the whole makeup process is that long for it to take that long is the period of time that you have to leave in between each product to absorb properly into the skin your moisturizer has to absorb properly into the skin because if your moisturizer does not absorb into the skin it's just going to be on the layer of the face and when you apply your foundation it's just going to be really messy it's going to mix into the foundation making this product heavy the next step is your power seal 
your power seal is very important that is a sweat control or oil control tonic i don't use alcon um alcon sweat block i've never tried it i don't know what to say about i don't have anything to say about it because i've never tried it but what, the one i've tried is the meron skin prep and the um, power seal from Nismetic. this is one of my long lasting makeup wall tools i don't joke with this product power seal is very very important when you're doing your makeup it's not one step you can skip because this is a sweat control tonic which you apply only on your t-zone do you have a client that sweats so much most clients does not sweat all over their face the sweat starts from the t-zone so if you're trying to control the sweat or oil on the skin you have to focus on the t-zone your focus should be on the t-zone because every other part of the face trust me is not a problem it starts from the t-zone the nose area the forehead area under your nose and on your chin so apply your power seal on that area and let it dry in completely into the skin let it absorb and dry completely when you're doing your makeup you have to tell your client this makeup is going to take this particular period of time so they don't rush you if they come late that is on them so you have to relax and do your makeup and make sure everything is intact because if that power seal or a uh, mirror whichever one you're using does not absorb properly into your skin and does not dry up completely trust me it's not going to do any job for you it's very important having the product is important application technique is very it's mostly important compared to having the product you need to have the product and you need to learn your application your application technique is really really important know your products know how your product works then know how to use the product so once your um sweat um, sorry your power seal is completely absorbed into the skin like completely dry this is the time you go into it with a matte primer this matte primer has to be like a very dry matte primer not Rimmel London Rimmel London is a mattifying primer but it's not like a very dry mattifying primer I don't consider it a dry mattifying primer because it's still moisturizing after applying it if you apply Rimmel London on the t-zone after applying your um, power seal or Meron skin prep is going to soften that product thereby reducing the, the the work it's supposed to do if you apply a an, like a hydrating primer on that area it's going to soften that power seal it's going to soften the mirror skin prep you already have and reduce the effectiveness of that product reduce what it's supposed to do so you have to go into it with a matte primer and when you're doing this a mattifying primer the primer i recommend is becca but because becca has discontinued like what i heard and it's difficult to get becca and if you get becca now it's going to be really really pricey i highly recommend the gentle dough the gentle dough is a nigerian brand and it's very affordable and it does the job another product i've tried another mattifying product brand that i've tried i really like is the classic it's really 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 nice so opt for the gentle dove or the classic or becca if you can assess becca and that product you have to use very little quantity this is where your application technique comes to play again you have to use very little quantity because if you have so much on the skin your foundation is going to break thereby giving the sweat space to penetrate into your foundation once it starts coming out because the essence of the um, power seal and the mirror skin prep is to separate the sweat from your makeup once the sweat start coming out it's not going to affect your makeup all your client needs to do is you know fan herself get under the ac or get in front of the fan let the sweat dry back into the makeup and please after doing your client's makeup always tell them do not dab your face if you're doing makeup on the bride because this is the wedding season and of course it's going to be hot in december kind of your brides for us who do bridal makeup your brides are going to be out dancing you do have she bride space makeup she's going to be everywhere and everywhere so this is very important this is very important to you know so tell them do not dab do not dab do not drag don't use your hand you don't use anything the worst part is when using a powder puff to pick powder and place on a sweaty face to pick powder with a powder brush and place on a sweaty face it's very very wrong your clients might not know this but it's your job as a makeup artist to let them know 
The next step after applying this primer, remember you're applying very little quantity and make sure you spread it and spread it fast because it is a mattifying primer. The next step after applying this primer is your foundation. This is very, very important. At this point, you can decide to use either a mattifying foundation or not. It doesn't even really matter at this point. That's why I said earlier that long-lasting makeup does not start from your from a matte foundation. You have to get your skin prepped intact. So your foundation is very, very important. What I do at this point, so I have a client that is sweaty. In fact, generally for all my clients, what I do when it gets to applying foundation, because where they start sweating is from the nose area and the forehead area, under the nose and on the chin, which, which is a T-zone very important when applying your foundation make sure you apply your foundation all over the skin then take the excess from your beauty sponge or brush whichever thing you're using to apply foundation i love this i like i love using beauty sponge to apply foundation especially when i'm not working with a matte foundation take that beauty sponge or you take your brush and apply the excess of the excess from the foundation on the nose area why do you do this this is because you don't pack products on that area. This is where they start sweating. If you pack products on that area, once they start sweating, there's a lot of products to soak that sweat. If you have less products on that area, once it starts, the sweat starts coming out, it just floats on it because there is no enough product to soak it. Let's use, for instance, if it's raining and there is mud, the rain is going to soak the mud. But if there is no mud, the rain is just going to flow and when it's done raining, everywhere is just going to be dry. But once there is mud there, the rain is going to definitely soak the mud and you'll get a messy road if the road is not out. I don't know, this example is not related, but it kind of works because makeup is kind of um, related to a mud foundation. is related to a mud. I see it as dead, even though it's something to, you know, beautify us, beautify our clients, but Trust me, foundation is dead. When you're done, apply, when you're done with your event, just make sure you take off your makeup immediately. So this is very important. This is a very crucial step you need to know. Very little quantity of foundation. Don't even take foundation to that area. Take the excess from the beauty sponge or the brush to that area. You'll be surprised by the time you're done doing the makeup, you see that you have like a full coverage on that area because you're still going to contour the nose, you're still going to do cream contour, you're still going to do powder contour, you're going to do um concealer on the bridge of the nose, setting powder on the bridge of the nose. At the end of the day, you are having so much product and once the sweat starts coming out, it soaks this makeup and it starts looking tacky because of course you have a lot of product on that area. Generally, when you're working on the skin, makeup is to enhance the feature and not to change the feature of your face so when you're doing makeup think of it as i'm trying to enhance this person's natural beauty just very little quantity i say this in all my tutorial very little quantity of products goes a very long way because if you pack products by the time that makeup oxidizes it looks muddy it looks tacky and this is where you get the whole I don't know how to put it, but you know what we're talking about. This very tacky makeup. We know sometimes clients want full glam, but full glam does not mean you should pack product on the skin. There is just this normal quantity you should use on the skin, whether you're going for a full glam or a light glam. Or except you're trying to create like a no makeup makeup look when we know that we barely have foundation on the skin. But if you're creating like a normal look, make sure you do not pack product. Just have the right quantity the right amount and also try as much as possible to learn how to shade match if you shade match wrongly once your client starts sweating they are going to look very weird because at that point they look tired their face is tired so if your your mistake from the makeup is already showing everything is coming out because you shade match wrongly so that's it for long lasting makeup just have this at the back of your mind there is nothing absolutely nothing that stops sweat there is nothing that stops oil we just have to control it for a while we just have products that controls oil for a while you can control it for like six hours seven hours ten hours but it controls it does not mean it's going to come out it's still going to come out but it's controlling it in the sense that as it's coming out it's not messing with your makeup it's not sinking into the makeup you have on it's not sinking into the product you or your client has 
on their face so it's just very little quantity and you control this or you control the sweat you don't have you don't have the power to stop it because it's created by god we do not have the power to stop sweat i hope this um video is really helpful because i try to do um like a two in one so we'll have tutorials and we we'll still have this um video answering this question because i've got this question a lot how do we control sweat how do we stop sweat i hope you're still able to enjoy the tutorial of this gorgeous look gorgeous gorgeous look so if you are getting confused by watching and listening to me so i suggest you watch i suggest you watch two times you watch and listen to what i said and you watch and watch and learn the tutorial but this look is so gorgeous like this look bang it's it's judith on the brush you know it's judith behind the brush of course nothing less we expect nothing less so this is the look my model looks really gorgeous she's beautiful so we had to just you know enhance her natural features because of course we are not we are not doing transformation here what we're doing here is beauty enhancement and look at that finish look at that beautiful look i hope this video was helpful let me know in the comment section if you enjoyed subscribe if you're yet to so leave a thumbs up for me and i will see you guys in my next one